Hey guys and welcome back to War Thunder, it's Krebsy here with an updated version of How I Kill Tanks. A video I actually made a number of months ago where I tried to show you guys a tutorial, a guide on how you can optimize your gameplay in arcade ground forces so that you can dominate the enemy team and come to the top of the leaderboard on your team. Now the game has changed a lot since then and I've also learned a lot so hence the updated version of this uh, guide, but this is most notably going to be for arcade battles specifically. The core fundamentals uh, still apply over in Realistic and Simulator, but the gameplay mechanics between the different modes are so vastly different that you can't just really make one guide to fit them all. This is going to be specifically tailored towards arcade battles and how you can dominate the enemy team. Now just before we get out into an actual match where I'm going to be doing some live commentary, I want to show you guys or give you a one really important piece of knowledge that is going to separate you from the average Joe. That separates the good players from that average Joe. Now, you would think that your tank is the most important weapon. Whilst it is one of the most important weapons, your brain, as, as cheesy as it sounds, is also one of the most important weapons as well. Having knowledge of your opponent, how fast their reload speeds are, where to aim in order to penetrate them. Now, this would be something that would be hard to learn in a lot of other modes, you know, realistic and simulator mode, but in arcade, it's very friendly for the newbie. You know where to shoot the enemy because on the middle of your crosshairs, it shows you the green, the red, the yellow, and you learn through repetition uh, where to aim at the enemy, and this can help you in realistic and simulator in the future if you ever decide to go venture into those modes. But, apart from that, the most key principal thing that you need to know is where the aimer is in a tank, alright? And there's a reason for this, because a lot of encounters that we go into, half the time, your enemy is going to be completely oblivious to your presence. They might be exposing their side armor to you, you might get a long shot on them from a vast range. The other encounters, the other 50%, this is what separates the good players from the average player. It's being able to win those head-on confrontations. You come around a corner, there's an enemy tank with their gun barrel facing down at you. How are you going to come out the victor of that? And that is by knowing where the enemy aimer is. And the reason why is because the aimer in the tank is the guy who does all the job with fi all the job of firing the gun. If he is dead, the gun does not fire, and it does not fire for another 5 seconds or so until they get a new man in there. And if that tank is already fired and they're reloading and then the aimer dies, then they have to start that reload all over again. So you can imagine when the aimer is down, there's a huge downtime on the enemy tank before he can shoot you back. And that is very important to know where the aimer is within a vehicle. So of course learning this, uh, the position of the aimer is going to come through repetition, but there is a very big generalization that you can make of where the aimer is within an enemy vehicle. In almost all vehicles in War Thunder, the aimer is on the left hand side of the turret. So imagine you come against an enemy vehicle straight on. You have to aim on the right hand side of the turret on the flat por portion so that penetrates kills the aimer in the first shot and that means that the downtime comes down. So you're going to have to aim on the right hand side in the hand on confrontation, take on the aimer. Now, this does not apply to every single tank. The aimer is almost always, for the Russians and the Germans, always it is on the left-hand side of the turret. Whereas for the Americans, this actually switches depending on which tier you're playing at. In the low tiers, the Americans, such as the M5A1 here, the aimer is still on the left-hand side of the turret, so you're going to have to aim on the right-hand side. Whereas... From the M4A1 onwards and the M36 GMC onwards, it switches around. Look at the M4A1 over here. It, the aimer goes onto the right-hand side of the turret or where you're going to have to aim on the left-hand side in a head-on confrontation. Same with the uh, tank destroyers. You look at the M18. The guy is on the left-hand side of the turret. Whereas from the M36 onwards, he's on the right-hand side. So this is just something that you have to know, uh, and so it's not that hard to learn as well, because for the Germans and also the Russians, the aimer is always on the left-hand side, always, no matter what tier, whereas on the Americans, it's on the right-hand side from the M4A1 onwards and the M36 onwards. That's really 
not too difficult to learn. So there you go. That is the most important critical thing that you guys need to know. Uh, when you're going up against enemies and this is something that i'm going to apply in some live game commentary so are you guys excited let's go out into a match so here we are in a match on kuban conquest i'm in my infamous t34 trio lineup very strong tanks for this tier and we've got my t34 1942 first because it has really good armor capabilities on it uh the turret is upgraded it's just a very formidable tank to be in and it looks like the point of contention is going to be A down there. Now, I've taken out half shells, and the reason why is because half the amount of shells means half the amount of full ammo racks, and that means a less likely chance of being ammo racked and blown up. But also, I have chosen to take out APCBC rounds. Those are armor penetrative rounds with an explosive component within them. And in general, those are the best shells to take out in War Thunder because they penetrate and then they explode inside. They're most capable. If you're using higher caliber guns, like on the KV-2 for example, then you might think about taking high explosive rounds because those do a lot of damage as well. But also, when you're in higher tier tanks going up uh, against vehicles that have, you know, like 200 millimeters of armor thickness, then you might also take out some armor piercing rounds so that you can kill enemy aimers. Uh, with in the first thing uh, shots and then you might switch over to APC BC so that you can go for the more weak spots on enemy vehicles by the way the general premise of arcade and ground forces is to try to get bombers as soon as possible I know it sounds strange you know playing ground forces to get planes what but honestly if you want to try to dominate the leaderboard going for bombers is a very easy way to kill enemies and to or to get in order to get bombs or bombers very quickly you can uh, kill enemy AI so if you learn the positions of enemy AI spawn points on certain maps uh, certain maps they're just much more uh, readily available and uh, easier to find then you can try to get you know one two even three sometimes enemy AI straight away and you know that means uh, that means that you've got a bomber before they even have a fighter to defend against that bomber so he just picked off that enemy right there very quickly. Nice and easy. There's an enemy T-34. We're going to swing around over to him. He's completely oblivious to us being here. I'm just going to shoot him in the side. The reason why I shoot tanks in the side armor, or like right in the middle sort of thing, maybe not always directly in the middle, but towards uh, the front middle, is the reason is because a lot of times the ammo racks can be found there because the ammo racks, of course, have to be near the aimer, you know, the loader, <laughs> if they're going to actually load shells, right? So you can get ammo rack shots, especially on uh, the Shermans or Panzer IVs, because a lot of times their their shells are located there. Now there's a Stug over here. I'm not sure if we can even penetrate that properly, just because of the angle. Maybe we can try. Uh, give it one more shot. Ooh, I think we can actually get. I think we can get some in here. It's also a Z's. He's probably got better shots on us than we do right now. So we're gonna go for him. Finish him off. Looks like my teammate was doing a little bit of work. Stug is going to back off because he's in an awkward position. We're hanging out back in the back over here. Back in the back. That's what we're doing. We just have to play defensively. There's no reason for me to be uh, pushing up ahead. But I'm just curious exactly where the enemy is going to come from. I'm thinking they might even come behind or how are they going to push. It's very awkward for the enemy. Ooh, look at all the potential targets. There we go. We got a bomber. I've even macroed my key because normally you'd press 9 in order to get the uh, bomber, right? I've macroed it so that I can press a button on my mouse and then I get the bomber. And the reason why is because there are a lot of competition for that bomber. Uh, people realize that. Now I've got the Wellington over here, the Jelly Welly. Not one of the best bombers. It's not as bad as the Lancaster. And the reason why it's not one of the best is because it's just mobility. It's honestly not as bad as uh, a Lancaster, but we can do some in here. But we're going to push up to where the SPG is. That's the Stug, who is... Ooh, it looks like he's firing down on me. So we're going to try to take him out before he takes me out. And uh, I think he might have even killed my teammate. That Z's or whatever that was up ahead. Now we're going to swing around by doing a belly flop. Let's see if we kill that Stug. We did! That's nice. Two kills. We still got six bombs to go. So this is exactly what I mean about the potential of bombers. You know, that's two kills really easily made. And, uh, you know, losing this bomber is not going to mean jack squat to 
to a death if I crash it like this. So I can do these sort of suicidal moves. I know it's not really to everybody's taste or flavor. Doing stuff like that seems kind of ridiculous. You know, you take out a bomb or you drop your bombs and you crash, but it is what it is. Got six kills already. Those bombs, uh, those bomb kills count. So three from bomber, three from tank. Getting it repaired, get that traverse uh, fixed up. Gotta check behind me. I seen somebody on my map, but it's fine. We got the hill terrain formations blocking any potential attacks. We're gonna fire in front. Tried to lead that a bit. We got a little bit of damage, but it's not fatal. It's not lethal. I'm just thinking how I'm gonna approach this now. I'm still just gonna play defensively because, you know, what's the point of going aggressive? Ah, oh, that BT-7 didn't pull up as far as I thought he might have. We can go for his T-70. He's not gonna penetrate me. I'm a freaking tank. I'm a T-34-1942 and he's a T-70. He's angled in such a way that's gonna be actually awkward. It's awkward to penetrate him. I can't believe it. <sighs> Normally this tank would be just dying instantly. But uh, because of his angle, then, you know, it's what it is. Go for this guy instead. Nothing. Missing all my shots. We've got an approaching enemy on the side. Why does he not go for me? Who knows? He's detracted. Good stuff. We're going to rotate a little bit. Oh my god, he's... <laughs> I don't think he realized that his uh, track was out because he was just rotating on one... Uh, set of tracks and so he just exposed his entire side armor to me we're just gonna keep on going for these guys we can get a bomber again more kills laying down this is the beauty or the infamous uh this is why it's the infamous t-34 trio because they're such powerful tanks formidable tanks to be in at this tier a lot of times you know you kill the enemy's top tanks and then all of a sudden all they're left with is just tier one or even reserve tanks sometimes and now i'm left with going with a bomber now uh, some people might ask, is it worth going for fighters or attackers? Honestly, bombers are the best way to get kills. But uh, I see a lot of people also get success. If uh, a lot of enemy planes are out, you can also go out in uh, fighters and try to shoot down planes. Because actually shooting down planes earns you a lot of points as well. Now, that guy is probably behind me. Probably going to try to go in for a ram of some sort. So I wouldn't doubt it. So we're going to try to... Ooh, you see that? He's pulling up on the side. Where is he? Still alive? Okay, we got a ground unit to kill. He's still alive. I want to. What I want to try to do after I've dropped my bombs is actually try to uh, shoot down enemy planes with my gunners. It's possible, but he got me instead. Whatever. It is what it is. Oh, they're actually capping the point. Interesting. What I can do is try to go kill this enemy, and I think he's facing towards my opponent or my ally, so. Gonna get off, off some really easy shots. We're just gonna fire right there. Plain old easy. Going for the cap. Each cap on a point is worth about the same amount of points as going for uh, a kill. So if I cap this, it'll be like getting a kill in terms of points. And you can see that I'm comfortably situated here. First place with a massive lead, 900 points. It's about three kills, three caps worth of points. BT5 approaching out on the side. After I've done capping this, we're just gonna go approach him. To kill BT-5s, it's very easy. These are low tier tanks. These are really low tier tanks, in fact. Uh, to kill them is very easy from the front. You just aim straight down the middle. But he's showing his ass, so it's a lot more awkward. But we can still just shoot on the remaining guy in the turret. And we've got another bomber! See what I mean, man? You just rack in these kills. Get the bomber next. So nine seconds till that's up. We've even got fighters coming out. No reason for them to be doing that. There's no enemy uh, fighters. If you're going to go out as support with uh, your fighters, then make sure that there's enemy fighters as well. Because these guys are not going to be able to penetrate tanks. I mean, maybe on the odd occasion you might get a penetration in the backside of the engine of an enemy vehicle, but it almost never happens. The only other thing that you could go for is anything with an open top. So like American tank destroyers or SPAA, that's the other option. See that BF-109 going for that SPAA down there? That's the only other option that he can really uh, go for. So there we go, easy match, easy days. What do you guys think about another one? So next match is on Ash River, it's Conquest. The point is right in the middle of the map, but we're not gonna go strictly for that point. We're actually gonna go for the kills and we're gonna spawn on the southern spawn point. And the reason why is because in this map, You've got a big giant hill with a massive cliffside 
And as you can imagine, having that altitude advantage means that you have, well, well, the altitude advantage, right? You can shoot down on the people below uh, very easily. And I'm wondering if my teammates are purposely going on top of the hill because they realize this as well, or they are not mm, knowledgeable of where the cap zone is. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. So we're not going to overextend too far. We're going to try to stay in the center of the hill. And likewise, there's probably going to be enemies approaching this position as well. So we got to try to clear them out before we clear the guys at the bottom of the hill out. But also, it uh, also depends. It's not as simple as that. Because of the curvature of this hill, you can also shoot down the enemy. So as I was talking about those AI, look at that. There's an AI right down there. We can finish him off really quick. Come on, please let me get this before my teammates do. Oh no, please. Come on, man. He's on fire. I want to kill him fast so I can show you guys another one. Here's another one. Right over here that you can kill. See, and that adds two points. I've already got an attacker. Now imagine me killing off this Panzer F2 here. And I've got a bomber. There you go, I got a bomber. <laughs> See, as I was saying... Uh, learn where to find the enemy AI and that will help you to get bombers ridiculously fast. So there's an enemy Stilg over here. Always when you grab bombers you want to be in a good position to uh, make sure that you don't get shot. I'm not in a great position but whatever. Hopefully we'll kill the enemy before they can do anything. And check this out. See I've got a bomber before they even have fighters to defend so that means I've got three bombs here that are going to be able to do a lot of damage. We're just going to drop them right on top of the A to prevent the enemy getting that cap. Let's drop it on top of here in anticipation of where the enemy is going to be. We could even have dropped it on the people that are stationary. That would have been a good motive as well. Good target to go for. Oop, here we go, M10. Oh no! My gun didn't stabilize in time. But the bombs have a 10 second re uh, timer before they explode so sometimes when you're trying to go for moving targets you want to make sure that you're aiming a bit in front we're just gonna go for this guy right on top wow we're even gonna try to use a machine gun perhaps this is uh, a bit too bold of me what I'm doing here this is actually very bold what I'm doing luckily this rock was in the position to uh, protect me from any other fire but we're going to go for this Panzer now. Right in the middle. Boom. Easy. That's the beauty about the explosive component. You aim in the middle. It's likely to explode. Kill the drivers and also the gunners. Now we've got a Stug here that's completely oblivious to my presence. We shoot him. That is not the gun. Oh god. This could be bad. This could be very bad. We're going to aim right there in the viewport. Because when you aim for the viewport, you have a very good chance to knock out the entire crew of the Stuggy. Oh my god! We're gonna get out of the way, and we're gonna- oh wow. We're gonna go for the Martyr first. Because this guy's gonna have a harder time killing me. The Panzer three. Unfortunately, there's no way to back out of your going for the uh, Bomber. Once you've already selected it. So, the sh I went for the Martyr first because the Martyr would have had a better chance of uh, penetrating me. That's something you learn from experience. That Panzer three does not have as great penetration, but I think a teammate of mine actually killed that panzer down there, so we're good. Let's drop a bomb on the guys camping up here, and also just on top of this Stug. We can also go for A. Looks like we've got a KV-1 that's going for it, so might just leave it there. Ooh, look at that. That guy's gonna die, watch. Oh, he didn't die?! What the fuck? Interesting. I think he moved out of the way. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that Stug was doing, if he was trying to aim uh, at me in a particular place or whatnot, but uh, <laughs> that was easy. Just again aiming for that viewport, because the way that the men are positioned in the Stug, you just aim in the viewport and you kill basically the entire crew in one shot. Those tanks are literally just uh, rolling weak spots, if anything. So the KV-1 is approaching. I'm just even tempted to go up there myself as well. So I can get some points. And there's that M10, right? So we're going to just ignore him for now. We're going to push up on top of A. Capture that. And then we can play defensive where the enemies are going to have to come towards us. 
in order to uh, try and capture the point. And that means that I'll have the advantage because I'm just staying stationary and they're coming to me, right? So we're just going to sneak around this bend. Go on top of A. Where's that KV-1? I don't know what the KV-1 is doing. Maybe he's detract or something. I'm not sure what he's doing. Interesting. Not really. So we're going to ignore that M10. We're just going to go for the cap first. Make sure that we've got it before engaging the enemy. I mean, we probably could have killed that M10, but you never know. What's going on? Oh, shit. Artillery fire. Lots of artillery fire. We see that there's no enemies approaching from the front, so we're just going to ignore them and face towards the rear in anticipation that any enemies might be coming from this direction. Last thing we want is somebody coming from the back. In fact, see, we can even see them from third person. Whoa! What, what was that? What was that? Oh, shit. I think I see somebody behind me. At least I see him on the map. Was it artillery? Huh. I'm confused. I actually am very confused right now. Just looking third person, seeing if there's anything approaching the bridge. Nothing is. We're repaired. We got the zone captured. We're good to go. We can start uh, mingling in with the enemies here. Gonna back off. Missed that shot. There's the M10. Very dangerous uh, opponent. Very dangerous, in fact. Got armored. Uh, turrets. So just aiming for his hull is actually the better option to go for. When you're using M10s, you want to make sure that you're hulled down because of your weak hull armors. So going for the hull is always a great thing. It's not f it's not directly for the aimer. I mean, you always want to go for the aimer first, but you know, with that tank, it has to be an exception sometimes. At least you're killing something rather than killing nothing, right? Gonna just aim on the right hand side, kill the aimer. See. He's not firing or anything, is he? We're going to aim in the middle, and that's him down. Because that's just, we're aiming for the remnants of his crew, right? Just going to aim right in the middle there. Sometimes you can get an ammo rack. You see that early ammo rack right at the front of the tank? Sometimes you can hit that, blow up the tank instantly. Whoa! Penetration right through the middle. 14 kills. We can get another bomber if we want to. Hello, baby. Oh my giddy aunt. Okay, so what we're going to do is approach this guy. So, are we going to try to go for weak spots? We got to go for right around here. <laughs> Holy balls. That guy di died fast. I don't know why he rotated his whole tank and not uh, and not just his hull. Because what you can do is, you know, rotate your lower side and then keep your turret facing the enemy. That would have been a lot more viable. But he exposed the side of his turret, shot right in there, finished him off. Nice and easy. And so we're going to push up along this direction. I have a feeling if I go down there, there's going to be nothing to kill. So we're going to go where the uh, remnants of the enemy is. And I imagine that's going to be towards where the spawns are. Man, we have just obliterated the enemy team this round. In fact, we can even grab a bomber and just kill the remaining guys that way. So we're just going to start pressing the button, waiting for the next event. Oh, shit. There we go. That's another guy down. I think I was actually on his back. It was. <laughs> I think he might have been trying to climb up the hill. Hmm. Running away from combat. I don't know. Trying to save repair costs? Maybe. Possibly. And so we see three guys down there that we can drop bombs on. Very nice indeed. So we're just going to rush him. Losing altitude to gain speed. Two guys dead. One man remaining. Probably just going to drop the last bombs on top of him. Oh, he is hiding. He is hiding. Yeah, good luck. Good luck indeed. And so we now we know where he is. We're just going to push up towards him. If my bombs don't blow him up. But they did. That is going to be the round over. 17 kills. Showing you guys uh, how to dominate in ground forces in arcade. Now, my style is definitely a brawler style. That's just the way that I like to play. Sometimes you get lots of kills like what I have now. Sometimes, uh, this guy's saying, what the fuck, are you a human? Uh, yes. S. <laughs> Uh, but sometimes I can be so offensive that I can overextend, and that's the last thing you want to do. So 
make sure if you're playing the brawling style like I like to play that you don't overextend uh, too much. And, uh, you know, you're really cautious taking on one opponent at a time sort of thing. So I hope this guide helped you guys. If it did, feel free to leave a message in the comment box below. If you got any questions, anything of the sort, feel free to leave qu those questions. Thank you guys for watching. And until the next video, this is Krebs, and I'll catch you guys later.